Hi everyone. In this video I'll show you how to install all the software you need to make games in Python. On the screen I have a list of the items we're going to install. The last two are optional so we'll skip those, but they're here for reference. I'm using Windows but I'll give instructions for installing on Mac as we go along. First we'll download each one and then install it. Let's start with Python. First we'll open a browser. I'm going to use Chrome and we'll navigate to python.org. Now they've made it very easy to download whatever version is the latest here on the main page, but we don't quite want to do that. For Windows, we want to download this version because the button up above will have us download the 32-bit installer. We want the 64-bit installer. So download the Windows x86-64 in executable installer. Mine's going to ask me where to save it, but yours may not, but that's okay. If in the end, it should just end up down here, and you can just click on this aspect, and it will launch the installer. Depending on which version of Windows 10 you have and how it's set up for security, it may say that you're trying to install an app that's not from the store, and I'm just going to say install anyway. Now, on this screen, it's very important that Windows users click this checkbox to add Python to the path. If you don't check that, you won't be able to use Python. Now that I have that checked, I can just click Install Now and the rest will be just fine. It'll take just a moment, and while it's doing that, let's look at a Mac download. For Mac, the version that they have you download is just fine. You could click down here on Mac OS 10 and just get the latest one, the Mac OS 64-bit installer. Well, this one's almost done. There we go. We'll click Close. And we should have the latest version. You're going to need at least versions 3.6, but the current version is going to be 3.8 something. And it, the something, this last digit, doesn't matter. As long as it's more than 3.6, you'll be fine. Next on the list is the pip installer. That is in, installed with Python 3.6, so we don't have to take any special steps to do that. Next on the list is Pygame, so we'll click on the Start button and type CMD, and you should be able to type Python dash dash version, and it should show you that you have a Python version 3.6 or higher installed. On a Mac, though, you'll want to say Python 3 space dash dash version, not just Python. Python is installed by default and will run the wrong version if you type it that way. While that's working, you should be able to run the next command, which is pip space install space pygame and press enter. If you're on a Mac, you'll want to type pip 3 space install space pygame. Now mine tells me that I already have it installed. Yours probably does not, and it will install it for you. And when that's all done, Come back to the video here, and we'll issue these commands to make sure that everything was installed correctly. You'll type Python and press Enter, and you should see the Python triple chevron prompt. We'll talk about that a little later, but this means that you are in the Python REPL, and you can issue Python commands from here. So to test our Pygame installation, you'll type import space Pygame, Enter, and you should see no errors. These messages are just fine. And then you should be able to type pygame.init with open and close parentheses. And press enter, and you should not get an error. That message there is perfectly normal, and this means that my pygame is installed correctly. To exit the Python prompt, you can just type quit with open and close parentheses. And you should come back to a prompt that ends with a chevron, and then you can type exit to close this prompt. Next on the list, we need a text editor, and we're going to use Visual Studio Code. So once again, I'll run my browser, and I'll search for Visual Studio Code. And at code.visualstudio.com, we can click any of these links and click the download button, or click the down, drop down chevron to select which download you want. If you want Mac OS, click Stable. Windows, you'll want the x64 version. And if you're running Linux, you're probably, you probably already know what you're doing here. And you may want to get that from 
uh, one of the other stores, but you can get it here if you need. So I'll click the download for Windows. It's going to ask me where to save it. Yours may not. Again, that's OK. And when it's done, I'll click the download artifact and launch the installer. Mine is already installed, but you can walk through yours. And when it's finished, it should come up. If it doesn't come up, you can click your start button and type code and you should find this lick this at the top of the list you can click on it and it should come up and look something like this the colors may be a little different the screen may look a little bit different but it'll all be pretty much the same now you can press control W or cl click the X here to close that window if you like uh, these shortcuts over here can be expanded by pressing control B or command B and that's the sidebar that you're toggling we're going to need a Python plugin in order to work with Python. And that's easy to do. I can come up to the search bar here on the extensions method me menu. And you can see that the shortcut for that is Control Shift X, or on a Mac it's Command Shift X. And so if that doesn't come up automatically, you can just Command Shift X and it'll appear. So I have some of these plugins already. Let's say I'm not sure which ones I have installed. Maybe my list is long. For some people it is. I can type Python here. And it shows, here's a Python link, but it has an install button, so I don't have it installed. I can click on this right now, because I know that's the one that I want. It has over 20 million uh, downloads. But before I do that, I might just click on it here and read the details. This one's published by Microsoft, and this is the one that I want. So I can click any of the install buttons. It will download it and install the plugin. It's pretty fast. Visual Studio Code is a pretty light utility. Now it shows that this extension is installed and I may need to restart the application in order for that to take effect. I can do that by pressing Control P or Command P on a Mac and then typing a greater than sign or a right chevron and then type reload and it will show reload window I can just click on that and that will restart the application and we're done now I can come up here and click on the Explorer or press control shift E and I'm back to ready to start Visual Studio Code next for a graphics editor we're going to install paint.net and I'm glad for the opportunity to show you how to do this because it's a little bit tricky. So I'll run my browser again and I will type getpaint.net. Do not type paint.net because it thinks it's a URL and it will try to navigate to it. This is really just a search. But getpaint.net is an explicit URL so it'll go just where you want it to. Now while you're on this page you see that it has a start and a start and a get and all kinds of buttons. These are all clickbait. Be very careful not to click on any of this stuff. What you want is the Get It Now free download up here in the corner. Click on that and it'll go to the downloads page and again don't click on any of these start buttons. You're gonna get it from .pdn so you can click on that and again, don't click on any of these buttons, any of these ads. You just want free download now, right here. And you can see in the lower left corner, almost, that it's going to the .pdn.com files download. So I'll put it in my downloads folder, and when the artifact is done downloading, I can click on it and I'm going to click on the install.exe and I'll press control X or right click and do cut. And I'm going to go up one and I'll create a new folder and I'll type paint.net 
I'll press enter on that or double click it and I'm going to right click and paste or use control V on the keyboard then I'll double click on this and it'll run the installer again I have to tell it that I don't want to buy this from the Microsoft Store and in order to do that I can just continue installing from outside the store this is a free program you do not have to pay for it they're very clear about that you can choose the express plug or the express installation if you like click next click agree you can read this if you like I always do and this one is really short but you don't have to you probably know what's in it and it'll take just a moment paint.net is not quite as powerful as Photoshop but it's a really great alternative there are a plethora of plugins for it to do all kinds of effects but I don't usually use any plugins I can do pretty much everything I need for game development without any plugins at all okay and it's finished I've skipped a little bit of time but I'll leave that check marks a checkbox marked so that it starts when I click finish and it comes up just fine so that looks good the last software we're going to install is the sound editor audacity so I'll open a browser and I'll just type audacity a u d a c i t y I'll do a search and the domain is audacityteam.org and once I'm on the landing page I can click on download and I want Windows or Mac choose the appropriate one once you click on it come down to where it says the installer and don't click on any of this that's ads come down here to the downloads list and here's the Windows installer and here's the Mac OS installer even though I clicked Windows before it comes down to all of the installers on the same page at the end so click the appropriate one do the download process and when you click on the art download artifact it should launch the installer choose your language and there aren't many options to this I already have it installed so I'm just gonna skip this but you would click yes and it would be all done when you were finished so you should be able to click start and then type audacity and it should show up in your search you probably also have it in your folders I have it right here and that comes up without complaint so that looks good okay let's have a look at those last two items a music editor or digital audio workstation is if you want to compose your own music you could also get this music off of SoundCloud or any other music store if you wanted to use somebody else's and pay for it that's okay um, I find that the music editor is almost as cheap as just paying for somebody else's music and then it can be your own or you don't have to have music at all for your game if you like um, for some games I use a map editor and that's one that I use for this game so I'm going to just show you the map editor download but you don't have to download and install it because I have already created all the graphics for this game and if I just type tiled editor it'll come up under mapeditor.org and this is the one now if you click on the download link it should go to itch.io and you can download it from there so if I click download it's a name your own price but you don't have to pay for any of it you can say no thanks just take me to the downloads here's the installer for Windows and here's the installer for Mac OS so choose the appropriate one and off you go you shouldn't need to consider any of the old ones 
and once you have it downloaded and installed, you'd be able to run it and create your own maps for your own games. Not all games use tile maps. Uh, this is the first one I've done for kids code camp, so you really wouldn't need to download it unless you were making a game like that. And that's it. You should be ready to make games.